The Papal and Fuchs Shield Scan is a presence sensor designed specifically for automatic revolving doors. This solid state scanner is equipped with time of flight technology and has no moving components, ensuring reliable and silent operation in any ambient conditions. This video will show you how to quickly and easily install and commission the sensor. All of the components required for installing and commissioning the shield scan are included in the scope of delivery. On delivery, the I.O. module is connected to the right-hand sensor. The primary and secondary sensors are assigned by connecting the I.O. module to the sensor that will act as the primary sensor. The conditions at the installation site determine which sensor should be assigned the primary role. Ideally, the I.O. module should be installed on the control side. We will now start with the installation. To start the installation process, use the drilling template to determine the mounting positions on the door frame. While doing so, be sure to maintain enough distance from the closing edges. Make the hole for the door transition cable in the hatched area on the drilling template. Use the drilling template to make two holes with a 3.6 mm spiral drill. If possible, make a third hole. Repeat the procedure described above on the opposite side to make holes for the secondary sensor. The hole for the door transition cable must be at least 8 mm in diameter. Thread the cord set for the door hinge side and the hinge opposite side through the 8 mm hole and leave the cable hanging. Next, install the primary module on the drive side. To do this, remove the cover by inserting a screwdriver into the marked opening and pushing the side wall of the cover outward until the rear catch is released and the inside of the primary module becomes visible. The I.O. module connects to the primary sensor on the drive side. As the secondary sensor is not connected to the I.O. module, a blind cover is used here instead. Thread the door transition cable through the primary sensor. Leave approximately 50 millimeters of the cable hanging outside of the housing and plug the connector into the relevant socket. Then pull the rest of the cable through to the secondary sensor. Use a crosshead screwdriver and the supplied screws to secure the primary module in place. A third screw can also be used for added stability. The next step is to install the secondary sensor on the opposite side of the doors. To do this, follow the same procedure as for the primary module. Open the cover by inserting a screwdriver into the marked opening and pushing the side wall of the cover outward until the rear catch is released and the inside of the primary module becomes visible. Now it's time to move on to the secondary side. Thread the cord set into the housing for the secondary sensor. To install the secondary sensor, insert the excess cord set into the depot space at the back of the device and secure the cable between the terminal lugs. As with the primary sensor, the secondary sensor can be installed using two or three screws. Plug the connection cable into the socket provided on the secondary sensor. Insert the blind cover into the secondary sensor and secure it using a 3 by 8 mm crosshead screw. Now go back to the primary side. Guide the door transition cable through the corrugated hose to the drive connected to the primary sensor. Slide the door transition cable with a 10-pin connection socket through the housing opening. Push the corrugated hose up to the opening in the housing and then press it down into the retaining ribs. Secure the corrugated hose at the bottom using the supplied adapter. Now remove the I.O. module and connect it to the 10-pin connector socket.
reinstall the I.O. module and store any protruding cable in the terminal compartment which has been designed for this purpose. Route the door transition cable to the drive and connect the cable using the screw terminal. You can now secure the corrugated hose in place using the wall bracket. Before proceeding with the teach-in procedure, remove the protective film from the lens. Finally, set the adjustment dial for the opening angle of the primary and secondary sensors as specified in the instruction manual for the specified door height. Once both modules have been installed and the primary sensor has been connected to the door controller, put the cover back on the door controller. The first thing the device learns during the teach-in procedure is the distance to the ground. It then learns the distance to the leading edge, that is, the width of the door, and then it uses the final door movement to learn the door opening angle. Before starting the teach-in procedure for the device, be sure that the door drive is ready for operation, the door is closed, and that there are no people or objects within the detection area. Once you have checked the above, press the teach-in button to start the teach-in procedure. If this is the initial commissioning of the shield scan, the status LED lights up continuously orange. In this case, press the teach-in button once. If the LED flashes orange or does not light up, press the teach-in button twice. The status LED will now begin to flash green and red alternately. Once this happens, leave the protection field within 10 seconds so that the sensor can automatically determine the distance to the ground. When the status LED starts flashing green, perform gesture control within 10 seconds. Gesture control means interrupting the beams with your arm, covering a section of at least 60 centimeters along the leading edge. Once the gestures have been detected, the status LED will flash red for two seconds. As soon as the status LED flashes green again, the output is enabled. Now it's time to start the door movement. The door opening angle is learned while the door is being opened. The status LED will flash green when this process is complete. As the door is closing, the status LED will flash red. When all the LEDs go out, this means the teach-in process has been completed successfully. The sensor system is now ready for operation and virtual wall suppression is activated. As a final check, carry out a functional inspection to ensure that people and objects are detected reliably. The two LEDs on the bottom side of the sensor detect people and objects on the door hinge side and the hinge opposite side respectively. The red LED lights up when someone approaches the door from the door hinge side. The green LED lights up when someone passes the door from the hinge opposite side. The sensor system has now been fully commissioned and the door is ready for use. As the final step, place the cover on the housing. Doing this means the sensor has IP65 protection. The sensor cover is available in three standard door colors, black, silver, and white. The cover can also be custom painted. More information on the ShieldScan door safety sensor can be found in the user manual available on our website. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact us directly. Thank you for your time.